In this episode of Dirty Elbows Garage, we are back to working on the mid-engine car, and we are gonna take a break from the drivetrain, actually, and work on a different subsystem. We're gonna be jumping into steering, and exactly why I'm putting a Prius component into my supercar. Let's get into it. In the majority of power steering pump setups, they are hydraulic pumps that are driven off of the main pulley drive of the engine. So we're looking at the front of the engine here, you've got your crank pulley, and typically that power steering pump might sit somewhere up here, which is going to be fed off of the serpentine belt or even its main, or even its, its own belt in some cases. Because the engine's going to be behind me, if I wanted to go that route, I'd have to take those hydraulic hoses off of my steering pump, route them down and under the driver compartment up to my steering rack. I don't really want to do that. I would like to keep it self-contained and not have to deal with that extra routing or any of that other work. Which brings us to the Toyota Prius steering column. Let's go check it out. This is an electric power steering system from a first generation Toyota Prius. There's a couple things that make it unique compared to other power steering systems, uh, including the fact that it's electric and not hydraulic. But one of those things is that the power system that actually adds power to the steering is in the steering column itself and not on the steering rack. So that keeps this package up kind of higher underneath the dash as opposed to kind of taking up that room along the steering rack up front. It can be removed from the can system and stay active. Uh, some of the other options out there for electric power steering, they require a wheel speed signal to even turn on and they'll actually enter a fault mode and that requires more programming to kind of activate that CAN signal and it's a little bit messy. There's a little bit of functionality that gets lost when you remove your wheel speed sensor, but I'll get right into that after I explain how this thing works. So let's check it out. Ignore this pipe down here and some of the other components laying around that's part of a currently failing test rig, which I'll cover why it's failing in just a minute. But to get started, this is our steering wheel. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. This lever right here controls the pitch of the steering wheel. It's just how the thing is mounted in the Prius as it comes that way. This right here is the torque sensor. What this is doing is it's picking up the differential load that the driver is putting into the steering column as it tries to get to the steering rack. So that's picking up how much torque you're actually putting into the steering system. What that does is it sends a signal down here to the control box, then the control box interprets that signal and it sends power up to this motor up here. Now this motor assists and multiplies the torque that the driver is doing on the back side of the sensor into the steering rack and out to the wheels and tires. So effectively, you're getting power steering because you turn here, this picks up how much you're trying to turn or how much force you're using to turn. This multiplies it and then it's much stronger on this side. Now remember earlier when I mentioned that when you unplug this system from the wheel speed sensor in the car, it kind of removes the feature. Well, what that wheel speed sensor does is that it sets up a range of force multiplication based on your vehicle speed. If you've ever tried to turn a steering wheel in a car that doesn't have power steering, you're gonna learn pretty quick that it's a lot easier to turn it as you're moving as opposed to sitting still. So, when you are sitting still in the Prius, this guy right here is using 100% of its force, and when you're actually moving, it tones it way down. That way you don't get jerky steering at higher speeds. When you take the wheel speed sensors out of the equation, what it does is it locks you in to roughly 45 miles an hour of an assumed speed. And so what it does is it should be a constant multiplier across the range. At least that's what I'm trying to test. But the reason the test rate is failing is that it's too strong for what I have set up right here. So let me turn a few things on and I will show you why it fails. There we go. <laughs> So I need to work on my test rig a little bit. Okay, so it has been quite the break and the temporary setup that I had the steering rack mounted up on that rail, uh, it didn't work. The food scale was a terrible idea. It was just meant to be a temporary solution to kind of get some raw numbers going, but I realized it was so bad, I had to jump to a legitimate setup right away. So, this is what I've got. Starting on the steering rack, 
We have it mounted to my vise. This is its main pivot point. Unfortunately, it's not strong enough to hold up to the wheel being turned like this. It needs a little bit more restraining it. Uh, in the vehicle, it actually has another mounting point over here, so it's got more support in the vehicle. So what I had to do here is add a ratchet strap on the front and the rear kind of balancing it over that pivot point. No big deal, but that's what holds it in place. On the output shaft, I have a cable tie here. What that's doing is it's keeping this U-joint from rocking too far away and then diving down. And that is keeping it locked to this 90 degree angle. So coming out here, I've got another cable going down to my load cell. Now load cell is currently upside down. You can see it right there. Uh, what it's doing is it's pulling up as I put weight here. So if you can see this, as I rotate the wheel, that arm moves, it grabs that cable, tightens it up, and it picks up the load that the steering rack is putting out. Okay, I also have the control box sitting right here. It's powered off of this battery that I have on a continuous charger. I've got a 30 amp inline fuse to the positive side, and then I have a switch to actually turn on and off the system, which you're gonna see in a test right now. Basically what we're gonna do is a quick test. I am going to leave this power steering rack off. I'm going to apply a load to the steering wheel via this cable. Then what's going to happen, it's gonna pull up on the cable, pull on the load cell. It's gonna take our graph and send it up a little bit. Then I'm gonna flip the switch, turning the power steering system on, and you're going to see exactly how that multiplier comes into effect. So let's get it going. Let me fire up the serial plotter right up here. Okay, it's cooking away. We're zeroed out, you can see. So I've got an eight pound weight right here. We put on the steering wheel. It's going to rotate it just like that. You're gonna see probably, yep, an initial little spike. And then the load has evened out right around about three and a half or so pounds of force that the load cell is reading. So I'm gonna flip the switch, get a little click from the control box. It turns on if you watch carefully. There it goes. You saw the steering rack actually put extra force onto the load cell, tighten things up a little bit more. And we are up here close to 20-ish pounds or so. So that's the multiplication actually taking course in between the sensor, the motor, and the input force to the output force. Okay, so now that you've seen how the test actually works, I'm gonna go through the data that I collected from the test itself. What I did is I hung different weights off of that same wire, just like I did, and I looked at the multiplier before, uh, the multiplier between turning on the power steering system and you know without power steering. So here is the data I collected. Now, I've got a column here for no power steering force, power steering force, and then the multiplier, which is just the uh, power steering force divided by no power steering. The red is my power steering multiplier and blue is my power steering force. Now based on everything that I can find, the steering controller, the power steering controller, when it does not have wheel speed sensor or a can connection to the rest of the car, it assumes 45 miles per hour. I am not exactly sure if it applies the same logic that it would if it did have a CAN system or if it's got a completely different protocol that it runs without any kind of um, other input from the vehicle. At the lower end of the graph, we have a pretty consistent multiplier. You can see it's almost a straight line and our multiplier is uniform there. Right around four pounds, we hit some kind of threshold in the program, the control logic, where four pounds of force, whatever that moment is induced on the steering wheel, the multiplier stays consistent, it reaches that transition point, and then it starts to fall off because my power steering force has plateaued. In a higher performance situation, you might be cranking on the wheel really hard, but to get that kind of differential torque built up in the steering wheel, you've gotta be parked up against a curb or something like that. Uh, and I believe that's why it's kind of plateauing out. If, if it knows its vehicle's not moving, then it's not going to give you more force to climb a curb or to if effectively just turn against a wall. So what does this kind of mean? How am I using this data? Well, first and foremost, I wanted to see that this system was working. I wanted to see how well it was working. I wanted to get a little bit of insight on how the data collected works. Now, every driving situation that I can think of on a track where I'm not actually turning a tire up against a curb or a wheel or anything like that is going to live within the consistent multiplier side of the graph. Meaning that I'm going to have a feedback that feels and and performs what I consider to be normal. 
when you're steering the car, you're gonna be working against the aligning moment of the vehicle, plus a handful of other factors. And you can sit down, you can calculate them, you can know what they're doing, you can estimate some values and things like that. But at the end of the day, steering is one of those things that feels right or it feels wrong. So that's where the value comes into it, uh, is to me, is, is getting that first step in the right direction of what I should expect when I sit down in that seat. It's a little bit different of a video because we didn't actually make a whole lot of progress in actually putting the car together or 3D scanning thing, no fabrication, anything like that. But if you like what you saw and you know where this project's going, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff because there is a ton more coming and uh, I'm excited to get to it. Thanks for watching. On this right here, this is a super duper crucial part. This is the nut behind the wheel. Of course, even more than if you're actually at speed and you have a little bit more, uh, you have a lot less rolling resist, or you have a lot more, the rolling of the,